we've got a visceral hypersensitivity issue going on with a lot of women with endometriosis and chronic pelvic pain. It's visceral hypersensitivity and that explains why my patients are doing well on this or not so well on this. It all clicked for me, so I want to tell you a little bit about it. Basically, they decided they really needed to understand what was going on for endometriosis patients because IBS was overrepresented in gynecological clinics. Patients were being sent to a gynecological clinic for their pelvic pain and then sent to a gastroenterologist for their pelvic pain and vice versa. There was a lot of money being spent going flip-flopping between specialists. In fact, I've had a number of patients who've had a gastroenterologist and their gynaecologist present at the pelvic surgery so they can both get in there and have a look and see what's, what's going on. Hysterectomy rates are much higher in women with IBS. So just that fact makes us think, well, why are they having hysterectomies? Pain. Chronic pelvic pain, visceral hypersensitivity, intractable conditions. So IBS we know is a visceral hypersensitivity condition and it seems to amplify the pain even in mild endometriosis. And that's why the intensity of pain in endometriosis bears little or no relationship to the severity of the gynecological disease and is much more representative of the hypersensitivity. Basically what they did is they had a look at the different groups, mild endo, moderate to severe, pel pelvic pain with no endometriosis or no visible endometriosis, IBS, and laparoscopy only. So this group was used as a control group just to make sure that having a laparoscopy didn't increase your visceral hypersensitivity. I have a little bit of a theory around this chronic pelvic pain, this pain with no endometriosis, is that there's potentially quite a bit of adenomyosis going on in here and we just haven't found it yet. You don't really have to interpret these figures much except to see that the Rome 3 pain score, which is IBS assented pain or functional digestive pain score, is positive in all of these groups and the IBS severity score is positive in all of these groups as you'd expect with IBS. And so then they said, okay, well then why are, why are these groups getting positive scores on these digestive scores? So they'd measured visceral hypersensitivity. Basically, the patients were given a, a bowel clear out and then a small balloon was inserted into the distal rectum and then they were invited to relax for an hour. Okay, <laughs> chill out, get used to the sensation. And then the pressure in that small balloon was increased by four millimetres of mercury per minute and then dropped down to baseline and then increased again and dropped down to, to baseline and increased again. And the, the patients were asked to um, measure their discomfort, pain uh, and so on. Basically, if they uh, registered pain or discomfort very early on, in the, in the process, then that was deemed hypersensitive because there was an expected threshold. It gives you a new meaning. You'll be able to go to bed tonight, understand, getting a visual of what visceral hypersensitivity <laughs> really feels like. Not unexpectedly, given my uh, recent rave, you can see that in fact all groups, endometriosis and IBS had a positive visceral hypersensitivity.